is a well known fact that uh, there are three things which are essential to human being namely food shelter and clothing and clothing plays a very vital role in our day to day life and also in many of our activities and uh, clothing is made from the textile fabrics about which we are going to discuss. A fabric is a structure which is obtained from either yarn or from yarns and uh, if it is produced from fiber it is called a non-woven fabric and if it is produced from yarns it is called a woven fabric and uh, the textiles are used in a wide variety of applications today not only for the apparel purposes and also for the industrial sector. For example, the filter fabric, the fabrics which are meant for house construction, fabrics which are used in medical textiles, fabrics which are used in agricultural sector and fabrics which are used in the industry and uh, so many other items come under the category of this uh, technical textiles. Today there is a wide market for the textile which is used in the industry and uh, a wide gamut of the fabrics namely the non-woven fabrics are used in geotextile applications. A geotextile is one which is used for laying the foundation and also for the road construction and uh, so many textile fibers and uh, fabrics are used especially the non-woven fabrics for these uh, various applications of geotextiles. The fabrics which are used are classified into two categories. One is the fabrics which are meant for the apparel sector and the other one which are meant for the technical te sector. Today the proportion of fabrics which is produced for technical textiles is quite high and uh, some years ago textiles was only thought of being used only for apparel purposes but today we hear what are called as smart textiles which incorporate many of the important items in the fabric so to say the measurement of pulse in the body, measurement of temperature in the body and they provide a lot of uh, applications in that way. And the types of fabrics which are produced are also quite varying in the sense that we have the woven fabrics which are produced from the yarns, the non-woven fabrics which are produced from the fibers and uh, the sheets are also being made and there is a wide gamut of fabrics which is produced from all these materials. Now, fabrics which are produced from the fibers are called nonovans and nonovan applications are many today. They are used as geotextile which is used for laying the foundation of a road or for constructing a road and for filtration, for embankment, for drainage and so many other uses. Textiles are also used in the agricultural sector for covering the various fruits from the vagaries of the weather and textiles are also used in the construction of the houses. In fact, it is a common feature to see in Canada that houses are built from the non-woven fabrics and one could see from the outside the non-woven fabric which has been used in such construction. And uh, textiles are also used in medical applications. For example, the bandages, the kneecap, the uh, various uh, you know this uh, replacement of the blood vessels in the heart. What happens is that when the blood vessels wear out they require replacement and uh, they are replaced by a warp knitted fabric which is called a prosthesis. And many applications of textiles are also seen in spacecraft in um, high altitude applications and life saving devices, parachutes are used as one of the life saving devices because one has to travel from the top to the bottom in the event of some accidents or some uh, disaster. And uh, 
the parachute is made of so many types of materials which we are going to discuss namely the nylon or kevlar and so on and so forth and so one can see many applications of these textiles now let us see how these fabrics are produced step by step as i said that we can make the fabric from the fiber or from the yarn the fabric that is produced from fiber is called nonwoven and the fiber that is produced the fabric that is produced from yarn is called woven fabric and we have another category called the knitted fabric usually what we wear outside is all woven fabric and what we wear inside the body namely the bunion or the panty and all that they are called the knitted fabric there are so many types of woven and knitted fabrics which i am going to tell you and this nano woven technology is also a very fast growing technology and many useful products have been produced the fabric which we have spoken is made out of either fibers or yarns but we will take the production of woven fabric to start with and after that we shall discuss the manufacture of these various nano ones generally yarns are produced from fibers a yarn is a material which contains twist first we will discuss about the fibers and then come to the yarns fibers fibers are short flexible substances having high length to width ratio they are fine hair like substances which form the building block of any textile material textile fibers must possess certain physical and chemical features to enable further manufacturing processes to become a useful product they must be readily available and economical there are several types of fibers which are used in the production of yarns fibers can be classified into many types such as the natural fibers the synthetic fibers the regenerated fibers metal fibers and so on and so forth the consumption of this cotton fiber by far is the greatest when compared to the other fibers but today the synthetic fibers such as polyester is used to a very large extent in combination with cotton for the production of apparel fabrics textile fibers may be broadly classified into say natural fibers man made fibers under natural fibers we have plant fibers animal fibers and uh, um, under plant fibers we have stem fibers leaf fibers seed fibers and husk fibers natural fibers these are fibers derived from sources like plants or animals cotton flax silk and wool are most commonly used natural fibers plant fibers plant fibers may be obtained from stem leaf seed or husk part of the plant they are also called as cellulosic fibers all plant fibers have good water absorbency hence they are preferred for making products that require hydrophilic characteristics like diaphers towels etc they are also good conductor of heat hence found to be ideal for summer wear most of the plant fibers have low resiliency hence the fabrics made out of them wrinkle badly natural fibers except silk are usually available in the form of short fibers now plant fibers are classified into stem leaf seed and husk classification of fibers fibers obtained from stem part of the plant are known as bast fibers examples flax hemp jute rami examples of leaf fibers are manila sisal and pina 
cotton is the most popular seed fiber. Coir is derived from the husk of a coconut. Now cotton is a natural fiber. It is obtained from the plant and cotton fibers are very fine depending on the variety to which they belong. We have cottons which are called short staple cottons, cottons which are called medium staple cottons, cottons which are called long staple cottons. They are all classified in such a pattern on the basis of their length and the length of the cotton fiber may range from about 22 millimeters to let us say about 32 to 33 millimeters though there are certain cottons which have a length of 40 mm and above but they are all quite rare. Now generally the cotton is uh, classified into four varieties Gossipium barbarium, Gossipium hirsutum, Gossipium arboreum and Gossipium barbadans. And these are on the basis of the species that they are being classified. And the cotton fiber has got a diameter of around say about 10 micrometers or so. 1 micrometer is 1 divided by 1 followed by 6 ciphers of meter. So this is called a micrometer and generally the fibers are classified according to their fineness. Finer fibers have lower diameter and coarser fibers have larger diameters. Now cotton is one of the natural fibers that is produced for the production of yarns but today there are a number of natural fibers for example we have sizzle, then coir, then hemp, kenoff, bamboo, jute, rami and flax. All these natural fibers apart from the cotton are used for making composites. A composite is a substance which contains a fiber and a matrix. Reinforced concrete is an example for a composite. And if some fibers are taken and then they are wrapped with a cellophane sheet, what you get is a composite. These are all examples for the composite. Wool is a composite fiber because it contains these microfibrils which are embedded in matrix. And the fibers are also classified according to the origin from which they are obtained. For example, cotton is a seed fiber. We have a leaf fiber and pineapple is an example for a leaf fiber. And bast fibers are those which are produced by extracting the fiber from the stem of the plant. For example, jute, flax, rami, they are all called the bast fibers because they are dipped in water, a process which is called retting and then after softening the stem, the fibers are reeled off from that. And we have silk which is a naturally obtained protein fiber and wool which is also obtained from the sheep. Both sheep and silk are called protein fibers whereas cotton and all these fibers are called cellulosic fibers because they contain cellulose and it is that substance which gives the strength to the cotton fiber. Lab, how cotton is produced and then it is used for the production of yarn. Let us spend a few minutes on these aspects. Cotton is a plant which is grown and then as the plant grows, it develops the flowering starts and after the flowering we get a bowl, B-O-L-L. -L. 
the bowl contains several fibers along with a seed and cotton fibers along with a seed are called kapok, seed cotton. And the seed has to be removed from the cotton in order to use it for the production of yarn. That process is called ginning. Ginning is a process where the seed is removed from the cotton or the lint. A kapo consists of two portions. One is the fiber portion, the other is the seed portion. The fiber portion is called lint, L-I-N-T. भेजनी है जी हमें बढ़िया सी बना देना एक
India is a country which produces all types of cottons and uh, there are countries which produce very good cotton like Egypt, then South America, and Turkey, then uh, Pakistan and all so many industries are there. And in India, the cotton is grown in Coimbatore, in Rajapalayam and in Andhra and also Gujarat. Gujarat is a place where several types of cottons are grown. Today, there are what are called organic cottons which are being used for the production of yarn. Organic cotton, unlike the normal cotton, is produced using biopesticides and um, they also provide an ecology environment for the fabrics produced out of them and uh, it is being preferred for the production of socks and apparels and other things. And cotton also was available in the color form which was called colored cotton and uh, it was thought that if colored cotton was used for the production of yarn and those yarns are used for the production of fabrics and subsequently to the garments that will provide a very good saving in dyeing and uh, up handling these materials. But what happened was that uh, the production of colored cotton led to a severe uh, problem where the normal cotton was grown. If a sample of this uh, colored cotton settled on this white cotton, it was sufficient to lead to contamination. And uh, also the colors that were produced from the colored cotton were not quite attractive. They were dull and when we have so many synthetic dyes which are capable of giving a very fast shade and also a dark shade and all. So, the use of the colored cotton became less and uh, some fabrics also have been made from this uh, colored cotton and they have been used. And so, we have uh, so many developments which have occurred in this uh, cotton, but what we use today is the cotton which is obtained from the uh, agricultural sector. And, uh, Cotton depending on its length and fineness is again uh, costly. If a finer cotton is required then the cost is quite high but on the other hand if a shorter if a short staple cotton is required the cost is likely to be less. But today the cotton cost has gone up over a period of years and uh, many spinning mills were finding it very difficult to make profits because of the escalation of cost of the cotton fiber. The expansion for Bt is Bacillus thuringiensis. cis. It has got resistance towards many of these microorganisms like caterpillars and other insects which feed on this uh, cotton. And uh, the seeds are supplied by some of the eminent uh, producers of this uh, seed, Monsanto and other people. And uh, this Bt cotton is preferred where a good strength is required for the cotton. Biotechnology is the technology based on biology, especially when used in agriculture, food science and medicine. Bt cotton is a genetically engineered form of natural cotton. It is one of the first crop protection products from biotechnology. All Bt cotton plants contain one or more forest genes derived from the soil dwelling bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis, thus they are transgenic plants. The insertion of Bt toxin gene from Bacillus thuringiensis causes cotton plant cells to produce crystal insecticidal proteins often referred to as cry proteins. These insecticidal proteins are effective in killing some of the most injurious caterpillar pests of cotton such as the larva of tobacco bud worms and ball worms. 
The beta toxin protein or the cry protein exists as an inactive prototoxin. But once an insect ingests the inactive toxin, it is converted into an active form of toxin due to the alkaline pH of the gut which solubilize the crystals. The activated toxin then binds to the surface of midgut epithelial cells and creates pores that cause cell swelling and lysis and eventually cause death of the insect. The choice of Bt toxin genes depends upon the crop and the targeted pest as most Bt toxins are insect group specific. The toxin is coded by a gene named Cry. There are a number of them. For example, the proteins encoded by the genes Cry1AC and Cry2AB control the cotton ballworms, that of Cry1AB controls corn border. The main advantage of utilizing biotechnology in agriculture are the possibilities of increase in productivity through the use of newer varieties that possess properties such as resistance to pests, diseases and other stressful conditions like drought, salinity or water logging. Animal fibers Based on their chemical composition, they are also called as protein fibers. Major animal fibers are wool and silk. The hair is sheared from sheep and silk is obtained from silk worm. Animal hair fibers are usually preferred for winter wear because of their excellent heat retention property. Wool has good drape resiliency texture and hand thus making it as popular suiting fabric. Some of the special animal hair fibers sheared from various animals across the globe are alpaca, angora, camel, kashmiri, llama, mohair and vicuna. They are generally used for luxury products owing to their unique properties like softness, luster and fineness. Fibers of indefinite length are called as filaments. Silk is the only natural filament. We have the wool fibers. Wool is a very costly fiber. It is also called luxury fiber. And wool is used as such for the production of blankets, for mufflers. And the reason why wool is being preferred is it is suitable in winter season. Most of the countries where the winter is very severe, they cannot live without the use of these woolen materials. So, Wool is a fiber which is produced from the sheep. It is cut or what is called shearing. And uh, these fibers are given a number of processes before they could be spun into a yarn. Carbonizing treatments, covering treatment are given to these wool fibers in order to convert them to a yarn. And there are two types of yarns which are produced from wool. One is called the woolen yarn, the other is called the worsted yarn. Now, worsted yarn is combed, whereas the woolen yarn is uncombed. So, naturally, the combed yarn is more fine compared to the carded yarn. And there are several types of wools which are available. And the most popular of this wool is called merino wool, which is obtained from sheep in Australia. It is a finer wool and it has got a diameter of around 24 microns. 1 micron as I said is equal to 1 divided by 1 followed by 6 ciphers. And normally the diameter of the fibers are represented in microns, whether it is a natural fiber or a synthetic fiber. There are fibers which are used in industrial applications, for example, carbon. A carbon fiber has got around 3 to 4 micron diameter, so it is very fine. We call a fiber whose diameter is much less as a finer fiber and a fiber which has got a greater diameter as a coarser fiber. This is how the fibers are being classified.
classified on the basis of their diameters. Well, I was telling you about wool, a few words about silk also I would like to say. Silk is a fiber which is continuous and which is produced from the cocoon which is obtained by the silkworm. We have the mulberry plantation. These mulberry leaves are very rich in nutrition and they contain lot of valuable materials also. A silk worm is fed with these mulberry leaves by chopping them off and then they grow in size. And after a certain stage, they enter into a stage called pupa stage, where the silkworm is inside this uh, shell and it is now producing the silk filament by emitting the saliva. So, there is a shell which is called a cocoon which weighs around 1.2 grams or so and the silk fiber is reeled off from that by a process called reeling that is withdrawing the filament from the cocoon and then winding it onto a package. There are several types of silks we have, the mulberry silk, the non-mulberry silk. The non-mulberry silks include tassar, moga, yeri and silk is a very valuable fiber which is quite expensive and also the materials which are produced from silk fiber are lustrous, they have good draping qualities. What is drape? Fitting. A silk sari fits a body much better than that of a cotton sari. This property we call it as a drape and silk has got a good luster as well. No other fiber has got this luster apart from the silk fiber. And silk earns valuable foreign exchange. We have in our country a number of silk research centers and also rearing centers and uh, the silk is being graded to assess its quality. Grading means that how many thick places are there, thin places are there in the yarn, irregularities are there in the yarn and then we designate a silk by its grade, a 1A quality or a 2A quality or a 3A quality as a case may be. It is said that Chinese silk is far superior to our Indian silk because the quality is good. In fact, uh, it is not strange that our handloom people were also making use of these two types of silks, one obtained from the Indian origin and the other obtained from China and the fabric was called Khan China silk. Khan means Kanjiburam, China means China. So the blend of this Kanjiburam silk and the silk obtained from China was called as Khan China silk. And silk sarees are quite expensive as you know the minimum cost is around 13,000 rupees and uh, silk is used as a filament in the production of sarees and also for various other items it can be blended with uh, polyester, it can be blended with wool and blended yarns can be produced, it can be blended with cotton as well and a kilogram of silk costs around 1,500 rupees today. Cotton is about 150 rupees, polyester is about 90 rupees per kilo, wool is 1000 rupees per kilo. So it is important to know 
about the cost of these raw materials so that the production of a material out of them and its cost can be predicted from these two items. Now, talking about the various fibers and their properties, we have cotton which has got very good abrasion resistance, the strength is good, absorbency is good, but resilience is poor and pilling resistance is good. Flax, it has got a very fair abrasion resistance and excellent strength, excellent absor comfort absorbency, but resiliency is poor and good pilling resistance. As far as silk is concerned, it has fair abrasion resistance, good strength, excellent comfort absorbency, fair resiliency and good pilling. And wool is known for very good fair to good abrasion resistance. But poor strength, comfort absorbency is excellent, resiliency is good and pilling resistance is fair. As far as man-made fibers are concerned, they are manufactured either from chemicals or from natural sources. In the early 19th century, with increasing demand for textile fibers, they began to be manufactured mostly with the objective of imitating silk. Early manufactured fibers like viscose, nylon and acetate produced silk-like fabrics. The man-made fibers manufactured from natural cellulose or proteins are called as regenerated fibers. Examples of regenerated fibers are viscose rayon, acetate rayon, lyocell, polynosic rayon, etc. The properties of these fibers have major relation to its raw material of production. For example, viscose rayon being cellulosic and made from wood pulp has properties similar to cotton. Man-made fibers like nylon and polyester are produced from petroleum products. Polymers are melted and extruded through tiny holes of a shower-like device called a spinneret, producing long strands of fibers. Man-made fibers are usually manufactured in the form of filaments. The properties of man-made fibers may be manipulated depending on the raw materials, spinning method, condition and finishes, etc. Some of the most commonly used man-made fibers are polyester, nylon, acrylic, acetate, spandex, etc. These fibers shrink and melt at higher temperatures. They are found to have high strength and elasticity, thus making durable fabrics. Most of the synthetic fibers possess poor water absorbency. Well, we have the regenerated cellulose. The need for the cellulose, regenerated cellulose arose because of certain properties which were present in them. Rayon is a good example of a regenerated cellulosic fiber which is produced from wood pulp. Wood pulp consists of cellulose and then by a process the cellulose is regenerated. I will talk about this in great detail when we come to the fibers, but just to give you a brief introduction, the regenerated cellulose is obtained from wood pulp. And we have so many types of advanced cellulosic fibers today such as modal, tensile, bamboo, all fibers which are having good strength and which provide good feel to the fabric from which they are produced. And uh, the industry has grown with all these advanced cellulosic fibers, not only in the 
way that they are being used as such, but also blends with other materials such as bamboo and polyester, tensile and polyester, tensile and cotton, so many types of combinations are possible in them. And they also have some properties which are quite different from those of the cotton. The fabrics which are produced from this rayon and other advanced cellulosic fibers are soft, have excellent hand and in certain cases they are also endowed with antimicrobial effect in the sense that they can fight against the bacteria. As I said in the beginning, textiles are used in a very wide variety of applications not only to provide the you know a fabric which is being worn, but it is endowed with so many other characteristics such as this uh, medical application and uh, a fabric can uh, detect the pulse of the person and also provide uh, this uh, vitamin C effect to the body as well. And these are all possible because of the various functional finishes which have been developed over the period of years. And there is another fiber called polynosic or the high wet modulus fiber. What is modulus? Modulus is nothing but the stress divided by strain. When a fiber is taken and it is pulled, it stretches. Suppose we find out the load that is required to stretch a fiber and also the extent to which the fiber has stretched or elongated, both these quantities will provide us this modulus. The one problem with regard to this viscose rayon was that when it was put in water, it lost 50 percent of its strength. That was avoided by producing high weight modulus fiber so that the loss in strength may not be let us say 50 percent, it will be only to the extent of 20 percent. This was possible because of the development of new technology and uh, the chemistry behind this uh, process. Now, let us talk about the synthetic fibers. The synthetic fiber, the first synthetic fiber was produced which was, which was called nylon by scientists called Carothers. And this fiber was used in many industrial applications and also for the production of garments. In fact, when nylon was introduced in the market, initially saris were produced, shirts were produced and uh, dress materials were all produced. But what happened was maybe in the year 1920, this nylon fiber was uh, developed. In 1942, two scientists, Winfield and Dixon, of ICI laboratories came out with a fiber called terilin. This fiber completed 50 years of its existence in the year 1992, but you will be surprised to note that what wool achieved in 5 centuries, this fiber achieved that feat in 5 decades. That is the merit of this polyester fiber. Today, without polyester fiber, no garment is produced either with viscose or with cotton as blend, shirts, suitings, even 100 percent polyester material is used as shirt and uh, suiting materials, although their comfort characteristics are rather poor. And if cotton is blended with that, not only the moisture absorption and all that improves, the cost also will come down. But today at one time the polyester was costing higher compared to cotton, but today it is the reverse story. Cotton is costing more than polyester sari, a polyester fiber. And there were a number of industries in India which were making this polyester fiber and supplying these to the various mills, the calico polyester. Today Reliance is there and uh, they are the largest producers of this polyester fiber. And uh, we had Swadeshi politics in Delhi, Bangaigon in Assam, and uh, Calico polyesters in Baroda, 
and even in Chennai, there was one industry called Indian Organic Chemicals, which was producing polyester. Unfortunately, today the company is closed because of the competition and other factors. But reliance are coming in a very big way in the various types of production of these polyester fibers. And they supply polyester fiber in two forms to the industry. One is in the filament form. The other one is in the staple form. What is a staple? When a continuous filament is cut into a discontinuous filament, it is called a staple. Where what is the reason for cutting it to a particular length like 38 mm or 40 mm or 44 mm and all? This is done with a view to blending that fiber with cotton or viscose and to make blended yarns. I was telling you about bamboo fiber. Today, bamboo fiber is blended with polyester in order to provide antimicrobial effect to the fabrics. Bamboo is endowed with that antimicrobial effect. It can fight against the bacteria. It is a regenerated viscose fiber, but it has got the additional ability to fight against the bacteria. That is bamboo. So, the continuous filaments are marketed by this reliance and they are called POY yarn, partially oriented yarn. These filaments are used by the texturing industries who convert that yarn, for example, POY to a textured yarn. What is a textured yarn and what is a filament yarn? A filament yarn is a flat one, whereas a textured yarn has got this crimp or the bulk, the increase in diameter. These two characteristics are imported to the filament yarn by texturing machines, so that the fabrics that are produced out of them will have a good handle. And there are various types of texturizing these filament yarns, airjet texturizing, draw texturizing, then knit, de-knit method, there are so many things. But of all these texturing methods, the draw texturing process has been quite successful. And the feedstock for this draw texturing process is the POY, that is partially oriented yarn. Now, when the yarns are made, the extent of this orientation is given to them, which makes them to be called as POY or MOY or FOY. What is POY? Partially oriented yarn, MOY moderately oriented yarn, fully oriented yarn, FOY, that is the designation that is given to that yarn. So, there are texturing industries which are run by this reliance company in order to make the textured yarn. And the cut fibers which are called the staple fibers are made with a view to blending these either with cotton or with wool or with viscose or acrylic or whatever may be the other fiber. And the consumption of this uh, staple fiber which is produced by this reliance company is quite high and uh, many industries are making these yarns for the production of apparel fabrics. And you will be also surprised to know that polyester fiber which is produced by a process called the polymerization that is from terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol what we get is this polyester fiber and ester fiber. And there are various processes of making these polyester fibers such as this. Uh, uh, terephthalate that is uh, the and uh, the ethylene glycol. One is the alcohol, the other one is the acid. So, when an acid and an alcohol react together, you get an ester. And many types of polyester fibers are produced. For example, a high tenacity fiber. Now, I must tell you what is a tenacity. Tenacity is a factor or a parameter which represents the strength of the fiber. 
the higher the value of the tenacity, the higher the strength. It can be represented in many ways. Suppose we take a fiber and then go on applying load to that one and till it breaks, we find out how much load has been applied to the fiber to cause a breakage. That load is taken in grams force and it is divided by the tex. Now, tex means a factor which represents the fineness of the material. The number of grams in a kilometer is called tex. Number of grams in 8, 9 kilometers is called a denier. Number of grams in 10 kilometers is called a decitex. These are all units which are used for representing these man-made fibers such as polyester, nylon or acrylic or whatever it is. So, polyester fiber has got let us say about 5 grams per denier. Some fibers have got 8 grams per denier. And polyester fiber is a material which is used for the production of sewing thread. A sewing thread requires a fiber which has got a very high strength. Otherwise, the sewing thread may not have its own quality. The quality of a sewing thread is judged by its strength. And a, a sewing thread has got either 2 ply or 3 ply. So, we have a polyester cotton in sewing thread or a 100 percent polyester fiber also in sewing thread. Sewing thread is a very important uh, material for the garment industry and uh, this is uh, satisfied by using this uh, polyester fiber. Polyester fiber has got a good elongation also about 26 percent is the elongation of the fiber. The fiber fineness is determined by as I said tex or denier or decitex. One can be converted to the other by a conversion factor. So, polyester fibers are used as blends mostly for the production of yarns and it is a commodity fiber also because it is used in many industries and uh, it has got a very good uh, property as compared to cotton, a very high strength, good elongation and resistance towards chemicals. But there are other disadvantages namely static electrification and sometimes dyeing is a problem with regard to these uh, synthetic fibers. But they have been overcome by developing new processes or uh, varying these existing processes and all that and they have been quite successful in getting those fibers dyed. Well, at one time the polyester fiber was coming only in one denier, three denier or so, but today it is coming in what is called a micro denier. Now, a micro denier means less than 1 denier. So, if you have 150 denier yarn, if there are 150 fibers in the cross section, the denier per filament is 1. If there are 34 filaments in the cross section, it is about 4 point something. So, having more number of filaments in the cross section is an advantage because the quality of the fabric will improve the particularly the handle of the fabric. So, it is with that intention that these microfibers have been developed and microfibers are also blended with cotton, viscose and other materials to make a blended yarn and uh, these are used for the production of uh, knitted fabrics where we expect a very good feel and handle. Well, then we will go to this uh, nylon. Nylon is obtained by polymerization of caprolactam. This fiber is called nylon 6 and the fiber which is obtained by the polymerization of adipic acid and hexamethylene diamine is called nylon 6 6. Hexamethylene diamine and adipic acid. The difference between these two fibers lies in the fact that nylon 6 6 has got a higher melting point as compared to nylon 6 
and uh, when nylon 6 was produced as I told you, it was used in garments as well. And besides that, it was used in the industry particularly for this tire card. A passenger tire, a cycle tire or tires which are used in auto rickshaws or scooter or wherever they are used, they contain about 10 percent of the textile material in them which is nylon. Though other fibers were also tried for the purpose of using them as tire cord namely polyester, even Kevlar was used, steel wires and all that, cotton also was used, but it was found that the use of this uh, nylon was quite preferable and the type of nylon that is used in tire cord is nylon 6, whereas for uh, aircraft tires, it is the normal practice to use nylon 6, 6 fiber because of its higher resistance to heat and nylon has got a very high strength and uh, it is used in parachutes as well which is a life saving device and uh, it is used in uh, the filter fabric. The fabric that we use for printing the fabric by screen printing method makes use of this nylon because that screen which is used for producing the screen printed fabric is made out of nylon. So, today nylon finds a lot of applications as the nets, fish nets, then this tire cords, filter fabric and um, so many other uses. And we have other fibers such as acrylic fiber. Acrylic fiber is generally used as a replacement for wool. It provides warmth to the body. There are two types of acrylic fibers. One is the wet spun fiber, the other is the dry spun fiber. Mostly the wet spun fiber is used in the industry and one property which acrylic fiber possesses and which is not present in the other fibers is that is a bulk. If acrylic yarns are put in warm water, the bulk is generated and this generation of bulk in the yarn will produce, will lead to a fabric which has got good comfort characteristics. And there is a fiber which is called Kevlar, which is also a synthetic fiber. Kevlar is a very strong fiber which is used in marine applications for lifting of all these heavy items, we use these Kevlar yarns and Kevlar yarns are having very high strength. Nomex, which has got this flame retardant characteristics. This fiber when it is used for making a fabric will put out the fire and it would not catch fire so soon. That is the quality of this Nomex fiber. Then there are other fibers like poly, benzene, metazole, PBT and ceramic fibers are there. There are silicon fibers called uh, silicon fibers which are, which are having a very high resistance towards the temperature. In fact, glass fiber is also a fiber which has got a very good resistance towards the heat. So, glass fiber and carbon fibers are blended together to make what is called a composite. As I said that a composite has got two substances, one is a soft substance, the other is a hard substance and uh, when a composite is made, it is a sort of a compromise between a high cost fiber and also a low cost fiber and uh, the many types of uh, composites have been produced and used in the industry, particularly for pipes, for insulation, for other uses and all. Influence of major fiber properties on fabric performance and appearance. Strong fibers like polyester produce strong fabrics with good resistance to rubbing. Absorbency of fibers decides the absorbency, comfort, warmth, static charge, buildup of fabrics. Those fibers which absorb water are hydrophilic fibers and those which do not absorb water are called hydrophobic fibers. 
most of the synthetic fibers are hydrophobic in nature. Fibers with a good elasticity produce fabrics with good fit and appearance. Heat conductivity of fibers affects the comfort and warming effect of fabrics. Wool is a poor conductor of heat, so they possess insulating characteristics. Fabric luster depends on the fiber structure and luster. Resilient fibers like wool contribute to high wrinkle recovery. Thus, fabric made of wool does not wrinkle. I was mentioning these uh, protein fibers, namely this uh, wool and silk to you. And uh, wool of course is blended with polyester or with cotton to produce the blended yarn because wool is quite expensive. And wool has got a character which is quite different from that of the cotton in the sense that Although wool has got a lower strength when compared to cotton, its tenacity is around 1.1 grams per denier, whereas cotton has got about 3.4 grams per denier. Wool has got a very high elongation, say about 40 percent, whereas cotton has got about 5.5 percent. And moisture absorption of wool is also quite high, 17 percent for wool, whereas cotton has got about 8.5 percent. And wool is preferred for countries where the temperature is very low and uh, wool is used for the production of blankets, shawls and uh, the garments, pants, soups and uh, wool finds a lot of application. And the most superior wool that we get is called the merino wool. Whereas the wool that we produce in our country are called chokla wool. They are rather coarse and only fit for blankets. And uh, although attempts are being made to produce wool as fine as merino, but still the efforts are continuing and uh, our Indian wools have not come up to the standard of this merino wool. There are many woolen industries in North India. Raymond's is uh, one such unit which is producing these uh, polyester wool suitings on a very large scale. And uh, there is what is called a wool mark to ensure that the material or the product contains 100 percent wool. So also silk mark is given to the fabrics which contain genuine silk and not any other contamination of the silk or any other fiber. Well, I was just mentioning to you about the terms such as the tex, linear, desi tex and all. Now, it is very important that we are able to designate a yarn or a fiber or a fabric which we are going to discuss by certain parameters so that for retail purchasing or for production of such garments, this information will be highly useful. Even I was mentioning to you about the sewing thread. Sewing thread also should be given such a designation which is uh, suitable for identifying them from various other brands and uh, ensuring that we have the required quality. So quality is one aspect which is very very important in the manufacture of any item for example a yarn or a fabric and uh, I will tell you more about it as and when we proceed. <laughs> now this uh, yarn which is produced by various industries in India, say spinning industry or a spinning mill as it is called. A spinning mill is one which converts the fiber to a yarn and then markets it to people who want that for conversion to garment, I mean woven fabrics or knitted fabrics as the case may be. Some of the yarns are also used in embroidery purposes. They are called embroidery threads.
they are dyed in several shades. So also the sewing threads are dyed in several shades to attend to many of the fabrics having different colors and all that. In fact, it is very important that the shade of the sewing thread should match with the shade of the fabric to which it is being used. So these items are very important. Now for designating the yarns, if it is produced by a spinning mill, what are the units? One is the tex or the count. Count is something which is normally used by a spinning mill for selling the product because some of these fabrics which we produce make use of yarns of a particular type. For example, there is a suiting, a polyester cotton suiting. This suiting uses a polyester cotton yarn of let us say 16 count in warp or 16 count in it. What are warp and weft? A fabric has got two principal directions. This vertical direction of a fabric is called warp. There are threads which are in the transverse direction, they are called weft. So as we will explain later, a product, a woven fabric is produced by the interlacement of the warp and the weft. And uh, the two sets of yarns are used in a woven fabric that is warp and weft, whereas for a knitted fabric only one type of yarn is used, whether it is, again there are subdivisions in knitting called warp knitting and weft knitting. So, whether it is warp knitting or weft knitting, we use only one type of yarn, whereas two types of yarns are used for woven fabric. And there are certain fabrics like triaxial fabrics where we use three types of yarns, two yarns at an angle, triaxial fabrics. So this is at 60, 60, 60. So three threads are there, triaxial fabric. They are only used in industrial applications, not for apparel purposes. And what is a count? We hear 30 count yarn, 10 count yarn, 8 count yarn, single yarns, double yarns, triple yarns. Let us first take the single yarn into consideration. Suppose you have 840 yards of this yarn and you weigh that 840 yards converted to a bundle and if the weight is 1 pound, it is a British unit unfortunately and 2.2 .2 pounds make 1 kilogram, 453.6 grams is 1 pound. So, if we let us say measure 840 yards of a particular yarn and weigh it in a balance, suppose the weight is 1 pound, it is called ones. Suppose it weighs 2 pounds, number of angs in 1 pound. Suppose we have two angs, that is one ang is 840 yards. Just like we call it a dozen, 12 constitutes one dozen. If any item is taken into consideration, either a plantain or books or whatever it is, 12 means one dozen. So 840 yards of yarn is one hank. Now this is fixed. This is varying. One hank means if there is one hank, one hank is equal to 840 yards. Suppose the weight of one hank is one pound, it is called ones. Suppose there are two hanks, that is equal to 1680 yards in one pound is called twos. Suppose there are 100 angs in 1 pound, it is designated as hundreds. You will appreciate that 
when we talk about hundreds count, the yardage is more. So, obviously, the material should be fine. Whereas, in the case of the counts such as tens or eights, there are eight angles in one pound, that means eight into eight hundred and forty yards. Whereas, in hundreds, it is hundred into eight hundred and forty yards. So, weight is the same. If weight remains the same, the number of this yarn should vary. That is what is designated as English cotton count. So, a 30 yarn means that there are 30 into 840 yards in 1 pound, 30 hangs in 1 pound. Now, what is the importance of this count and why it should be mentioned or it should be produced according to that number? That is a very good example I will give you. Suppose there is a count 30s and another count 28s. If you start making fabrics out of these two yarns, undoubtedly this 30s yarn will give a longer length compared to 28s because the amount of yarn which 28 contains is 20 into 840. Here it is 30 into 840, much more than this one. So, when the count becomes coarser, the fabric length comes down and when the count becomes more, the fabric length increases. As it is well known fact that uh, we always want to gain something more yardage. So, it is always better to spin to the count, not spinning either to 28s or 34s. 34s means what will happen is no doubt we will get a longer length, but the strength of the yarn will be impaired. As the count becomes finer, the strength decreases because of the less number of fibers in the cross section. So, this is a unit that is commonly used in the production of yarns. And the yarns contain twist also. There are two types of twists which we use S direction and Z direction. What is S direction? Suppose the angle of twist corresponds to, see this is z, the middle stroke of z, this is the middle stroke of z, this is called z twist, s twist is this one, whereas the middle stroke corresponds to the letter s, this corresponds to the middle stroke of the letter s. It is very easy to distinguish between the z twist and s twist. Z twist is the commonly given in the spinning machine the mills, whereas S twist is given for the Kadi yarn. In our country, there are two types of this uh, textile uh, industry. One is called an organized industry. That means all spinning mills and weaving mills, which are highly mechanized and then they use high speed machines and all. Whereas, Kadi is a sector which produces yarn by hand. A Kadi fabric is supposed to be made out of a yarn which is produced by hand and woven by hand, what is called as a hand loom, not a power loom. So, they wanted to distinguish between the Kadi yarn and also the yarn produced by a well organized sector. That is the reason why Kadi yarns were given as twist and uh, the yarns which are produced by the organized spinning mills are given the Z twist. So, Z twist is the one that is given normally in the spinning mills and the size of the mills is also represented by the number of spindles. If a mill has got 1 lakh spindles and another mill has got 12,000 spindles, this is a very big mill. So, the size of the mill is decided by the number of the spindles it has. So, in our country, we have mills in which the spindles are highly varying. Maybe where a mill is started, they have 12,000 spindles and later on it may be expanded to 50,000 or up to a lakh depending on the type of business they make. If it runs successfully, well, there will be an additional number of spindles and all. But over a period of years, if we talk about our textile industry, particularly the spinning mill, 
the performance has not been very good because of the escalation of cotton costs. Cotton today may be costing around 180 rupees per kilo. A bale of cotton which is about 350 kilos or so, they say it costs about 70,000 rupees or so, 70,000, 50,000. So, if the cost per kilo is worked out, we get about 150 to 200. And polyester is today is costing only about 90 to 92 rupees. At one time it was reversed the case, cotton was costing less and polyester was costing more, but today polyester is cheaper when compared to the cotton fiber. So, the yarn that a mill produces is designated by a count which is produced by a spinning mill is sold in the form of either cones or in hanks. Yarn sold in hanks is consumed by handloom industry, whereas yarns that is sold in the form of cone is consumed by weaving and knitting. There are videos which give an idea about the cones, hanks, spools and cheeses and also sewing thread packages. They contain a lot of information about the product and also the details of the products also. So, those videos can be seen. Metric count is if there is 1 kilogram in 1 kilometer length of the yarn or rather we will put it this way 1 kilometer length 1000 meters length of a yarn weigh 1 kilogram. It is 1 metric count. Suppose 28 kilograms one kilometer it is called 28 metric count. So, number of kilograms in one kilometer is called the metric count and metric count and the text can be easily obtained by dividing 1000 by tex, we get metric count. So, also dividing 1000 by metric count will yield tex. For example, 20 tex, it is equal to 50 metric count. And 20 tex is equal to approximately 30 English cotton count. This is 20 tex and 50 nm. So, it is interesting to note that the metric count is higher than that of the English cotton count, but the tex is lower than that of either the English cotton count or the metric count. This metric count is in vogue in the Kadi industry because in Kadi, as I mentioned, the, the type, the direction of twist that is given to the yarn is yes because they want to distinguish themselves by that S twist and there is no confusion between the yarn produced in the mechanized sector and also in the Kadi sector. In the Kadi sector, the yarn is produced by hand. So, there is a ring frame which is operated by rotating by hand and then the yarns are produced. So, we have talked about this metric count then English cotton count, tex, then denier and decitex. Now, decitex and denier can be easily converted. For example, 167 decitex is equal to 150 denier. So, decitex is nothing but tex multiplied by 10. So, 167 dc tex is nothing but 16.7 tex. It is important to note these units namely tex, English cotton count, metric count and all because a yarn is sold by putting a label on the cone or on the hank indicating this uh, particulars namely this English cotton count or metric count or the denier. And it is 
customary to use these terms denier for man made filaments like polyester for nylon for viscose filament yarns and uh, there are what are called these microfibers the textile industry also uses the microfibers today because they give a better yarn and there are more number of fibers in the cross section anything that is less than 1 denier is called microfiber and also the polyester fibers acrylic fibers are available in different cross sectional shapes normally the cross section is circular but it can be supplied in the form of a triangular cross section or a multi lobal one so this is triangular this is circular and multi lobal all these different cross sections of the fibers are supplied for enhancing this luster of the fabric and one very good example which provides luster to the fabric is silk when silk is degummed we are going to discuss what is degumming later that is removal of the gum the cross section becomes triangular in shape so when light falls on the fiber it it is reflected to a very large extent thereby providing this luster so cut
Okay, everybody put on your BGPs. We're going to have a graphic demo. This will kind of illustrate the twist that goes into the yarn when you pull it off the end of the spindle. You see each revolution around adds one more twist to the fiber. If you flip it over and pull off the other end, we'll be pulling off counterclockwise. And although it's not going to pick it up on camera, it'll actually end up taking the twist back out of that. But that's not what we're looking for. I just want to demonstrate, and if you're aware of how it reacts, how the um, things work together, you can compensate for it or use it to your advantage when you're winding your yarn onto the bobbin. We have mentioned about the yarns, but there are so many types of yarns, namely carded yarns, combed yarns, doubled yarns, tripled yarns, cable yarn, so forth, so on and so forth. The yarn that is produced in a ring frame is called a single yarn. And after that process, two yarns are combined and twist is given which we call it as a double yarn. Double yarn has got very good uniformity because two yarns are combined and twisted. They have got good strength also and invariably the double yarns are used in making trousers or suitings. Sometimes dress materials also, two fold yarns are used in the production of shirtings as well. But in knitting only a single yarn is used and it is rather unusual to use a two-fold yarn. And the triple yarns are used in sewing threads. If you examine a sewing thread and the idea of making a three-ply yarn is to provide a very good strength to the yarn, particularly the sewing threads. There are different types of sewing threads which are produced like filament, polyester, cotton, spun and uh, the coarse spun yarns about which I told you and 
the sewing threads have very high strength which is required for stitching and without putting a seam using the sewing thread no garment can be made satisfactorily. And in the case of the woolen yarn, the method of manufacturing these woolen yarns is quite different from that of the cotton yarn. This is the processing sequence for making these woolen yarn and worsted yarn. Um, there are also what are called fancy yarns. Rotor or open end spinning came into widespread use in the late 70s and early 80s. It is still in use today and comprises a large percentage of the 100% cotton yarn spun in the United States. It is very fast when compared to ring spinning, up to 10 times the production per spindle. From a cost standpoint, it doesn't require the roving process step and it does not require an extra winding step. Yarn is ready for use directly from the machine. The process today is highly automated and includes automatic piecing, restarting of broken ends, and doffing, removal of full packages. For these important economic reasons, rotor spinning became the yarn making system of choice through the early 90s in the US. Yarn count range is somewhat limited when compared to ring spinning. Rotor spinning doesn't perform well at much above number English 40 singles and is really most productive in the yarn counts below number English 20 singles. More than 95% of denim yarn produced in the U.S. is made using rotor spinning. The rotor spinning process is difficult to conceptualize. A sliver is used as the input and is fed into a small carding device called a combing roll or opening roll. This individualizes the fibers and performs the drafting. The loose fibers are sucked into a rotating rotor cup where they are attached to the rolling open end of yarn found there, thus the name open end spinning. The yarn is withdrawn and the process becomes continuous. Airjet spinning technology produces top quality comfort jet yarns at high production speeds. The sliver is drafted through the 4 over 4 roller drafting system. Each spin unit is driven individually. The draft settings are set centrally from the machine control panel. Fibers that leave the drafting zone are guided through the fiber feeding element, FFE, by means of negative pressure. The FFE shape is designed in a way to keep the fibers controlled in the parallel position for entering into the spinning tip. The front part of the fibers enters the tube of the spinning tip and creates the core of the yarn. The four air jets in the twist element create a whirlwind around the spinning tip by means of pressured air. The air drifts the loose fiber ends around the spinning tip. With the spinning speed, the wrapped fiber ends are pulled inside the tube and they are twisted around the yarn core. The Comfort Jet yarn structure shows paralyzed fiber mass forming the core of the yarn and the fiber ends twisted around the core. The yarn surface is smooth and even and shows a low value of yarn hairiness.
75 kino. This makes use of cotton and spandex yarn and the yarn is of spun type. It has got 168 ends per inch and 72 picks per inch and is piece dyed and uh, messerized fabric. The weight of the fabric is 5.86 ounces per square yard and it is used in sportswear pants and uniforms. Kaino is a finer cotton twill made of a single color that has been combed, messerized and often pre-shunk. Historically, Kaino was used to make uniforms and pants called khakis. Then,
this Hampton twill which is produced from a blend of cotton and spandex. The yarn used is spun type. It has got 90 ends per inch and 78 picks per inch and it is piece dried and the finish that is applied is a mercerized finish. The weight is 4.81 ounces per square yard. It is used in sportswear and shirting. Hampton twill is basically a top weight version of Kaino, sometimes sunfurized for shrink resistance. The weight range for this fabric is between 2 to 5 ounces per square yard. Used in sportswear and a top weight version of Kaino. Two to five ounces per
78 polyester gabardine this is as the name itself indicates is made from 100% polyester the number of ends are 80 and picks per inch or 52 the weight is 5.7 ounces per square yard it is used in suitings and slacks Five point seven ounces. Seventy-nine. This is the cavalry twill, and it is made of hundred percent cotton, which is a spun yarn. The number of ends are 90 per inch and picks are 48 per inch. It is piece dyed and the weight is 8.12 ounces per square yard. It is used in sports jackets, uniform and slacks. 
स्टार्ट दो राउंड करती है तो काम नहीं जाता है कौन है राउंड हाँ मैंने कहा था ना यार मैं बनी किसी को हाँ स्टार्ट दो मैं तो राउंड करती है तो काम नहीं जाता है कौन है राउंड हाँ मैंने कहा था ना यार मैं बनी किसी को
This is the herringbone fabric about which some discussions were already given. Fiber content is rayon and polyester. The count, the color is the yarn dyed. Many versions are sometimes called puppy's tooth. Hound's tooth is traditionally a suiting twill. Hound's tooth is traditionally
this is a glen plate which is made from acrylic spandex blended material the yarn used is the filament one it has got 102 ends per inch and 74 picks per inch and the weight of the fabric is 5.72 ounces per square yard it is used in suiting jackets and can be top weight the characteristics of glen plaid is a type of yarn dyed plaid that has hound's tooth in it inch and 0.72 ounces per square in suiting jackets the characteristics in it inch and the characteristic in it
84. This is called Sura, which is made out of silk, which is a filament yarn. The number of ends per inch are 176 and picks per inch are 104. The coloration is, it is a printed one and the weight of this uh, fabric is 2.08 ounces per square yard. It is used in blouses, ties and scarves. Sura is an even sided right handed twill from the silk fiber family. It is smooth, lustrous, usually printed as great drape and is the lightest weight fabric of the twill family. It is smooth, lustrous, great drape and is the lightest weight Eighty-five. This is the bridal satin, which is made out of polyester, and it has got four hundred ends per inch and sixty-two picks per inch. Very highly, uh, um, tightly woven fabric. It is a piece dyed one, and the weight of the fabric is four point three two ounces per square yard. It is used for bridal and evening wear. Bridal satin is a heavier weight satin weave that is often used in the evening and bridal markets. This six. This is the chame use. It is obtained, woven from silk. The count is that is the number of ends per inch are 340 and picks per inch are 130. The weight of the fabric is 2.04 ounces per square yard. It is used in lingerie and evening wear. Chame use is a French word meaning charming. The fabric is named for its extremely high luster. Historically, this was the lightest weight of the fabric, crepe fabric. Crepe back satins today it is the most drapey, extremely lustrous and the lightest weight satin but not often a crepe back. The lightest weight of the fabric, crepe fabric, the most drapey, extremely lustrous satin but not often. The lightest weight of the fabric. Extremely lustrous.
90. This is satin warp faced. Fiber content is cotton. Yarn construction is spun yarn. It has got 210 ends per inch and 114 picks per inch. The weight of the fabric is 3.3 ounces per square yard and it is used in shirt, sheets, sportswear, blouses, summer shorts or pants. Satin is a heavier satin and has a richer, duller luster than all the others. Fabric is made of spun yarns, usually cotton, while other satins are made of filament. Unlike other satins, the floats in a satin weave are usually in the weft direction, although there are many exceptions to this rule, including the swatch shown in this sketch. Such satin, spandex added, is used extensively in the print market. The floats in a satin weft direction, although shown in this sketch. Such satin added is used extensively in the print market. The floats in a satin number 92. This is a Dobby shirting which is made out of a combination of silk and cotton. The warp is a filament yarn while the weft is a spun yarn. The fabric has got 120 ends per inch and 116 picks per inch. It is a bleached fabric. The weight of the fabric is 1.81 ounces per square yard. It is used in shirting and blouses. While the weft is a spun yarn, the fabric has in picks per inch. It is the weight of the fabric is 1.81 ounces per square yard in shirting and blouses. While the weft is a spun yarn in picks per inch, it is the weight of the fabric is one point in shirting and blouse. While the weft is a spun yarn in picks per inch, it is the weight of the fabric is one point in shirting and blouse while the weft is a spun yarn while the weft is a spun yarn While the weft is a spun yarn, while the weft is a spun yarn, while the weft is a spun yarn. While the weft is a spun yarn,
So this is the agent setting. So there is a long float here. This is noticeable and it is under covered by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 weftions. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And there is a diagonal effect also in satin weave. So, if you look at the fabric, you have that kind of a design in that uh, fabric. Now, a satin can be converted to a satin. Let us take a 5 and satin as an example. So, this is a 5 and satin design. Suppose I put this cross and then leave a blank here. So, you have again a diagonal line. So, this is there is a pattern here. This is called a satin. A satin can be converted to a satin by filling up all those empty places by warp yarn and this becomes a weft yarn. So, the, and it is very easy to construct the satin weave in the sense I will just demonstrate to you. Take two steps here, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. This is how a satin weave is constructed. It is quite simple and one can even take three steps here. In that case, this cross will come here. I will demonstrate that also to you. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So, this is also a satin by taking three places. Earlier it was constructed taking two places, both are correct. And satin is used for bridal wear where a lot of uh, luster is expected for out of this garment. Any bed fabric which is sold for the bed, which is wrapped in a polythene sheet, maybe 5 meters or so, that has this satin weave. So, we talked about the twill weave 
some example, certain some example, then we have some of the views like Akaback, Dice, Crepe, Honeycomb. There are other views such as Akaback, Dice, Crepe, Brighton Honeycomb which are also produced. Brighton Honeycomb is essentially meant for towelling fabric and crepe is used in shirting. Dice say shirting. Aka back towel. And the type of loom that you require for making these fabrics is not plain one, but dobby. In a dobby loom, we can get a number of designs and uh, it is a little complicated one as compared to the plain loom. And as I mentioned, we have the jacquard. Jacquard loom is meant for providing the design in a bedspread or in a terry towel or in a furnishing fabric. Furnishing fabrics are used for covering these windows or for uh, table and uh, it is used in so many applications and all. There if you want to have the design we use this jacquard beam. So, these are all the various types of uh, looms which are used and we will just have a look at the types of fabrics that are produced. And uh, the other point which I did not mention was the way that the yarn is marketed. It is marketed in the form of cone, hanks which contain this yarn again this video will tell you the shape of this uh, hank and cheese. This is also meant for demonstrating the shape of this cheese. The yarn in the form of cone is used by weaving and knitting mills while the yarn in the form of hank is used by handloom weavers. And, uh, our government has stipulated that a certain percentage of cotton has to be spun in the form of cones and also in the form of hanks, especially to cater to the requirements of these handloom weavers. Uh, I also mentioned to you about the designation of these yarn sizes. They are mentioned as count, then text. or Decitex, Denier. The terms Tex, Decitex and also the Denier represent the yarn measuring system which is called a direct one. That means that the weight per unit length is being mentioned here the if 1 gram is contained in 1 kilo number of grams in a kilometer of yarn that is 1000 meters of the yarn it is called as 1 tex and 9 grams in 9000 1 gram in 9000 meters is called denier and 1 gram in 10000 meters is called Decitex. So, Tex, Denier and Decitex are direct systems of yarn numbering while English cotton count is the indirect system of yarn numbering. Here the hank means 840 yards and if there are it one if there is one hank in one pound it is called once english cotton count one hank 
in 1 pound, it is called ones. And this is an indirect system and one interesting aspect about this yarn numbering system is that in the case of this indirect yarn numbering systems as the number increases, it indicates the fineness of the yarn. That means, the yarn is thinner as the number increases in the English cotton count. While in the case of the other systems like Tex, Denier and Desi Tex, as the number decreases, it indicates fineness and vice versa. That means, a 1 denier yarn is very fine as compared to 100 denier filament and uh, the same thing applies to the desi text and also the denier. As the text number increases, it indicates the coarseness or the thickness of the material increases while the lower number or 1, 2, 3 like that indicates the fine nature of these filaments. And the direct system can be converted to indirect system by a conversion factor. We use uh, for converting the English cotton count to tex 590.5 divided by any, any represent the English cotton count will give the tex. So, also 590.5 divided by tex will give English cotton count. For example, 30's count is equal to 19.68 tex. Now, there is another count that is used in Khadi industry that is called metric count. It is represented as n capital and small m. This is the metric count. Yarns, the process of conversion of fibers into continuous strands of yarn is called spinning. The fibers are opened, cleaned, aligned and twisted to produce a yarn. The properties of yarn play a major role in fabric durability, hand, feel and look. Yarns are classified according to their fiber length. Spun yarns. Yarns made of twisting short fibers are called spun yarns. Spun yarns usually have a rough fuzzy surface with protruding fibers. Fabrics made of spun yarns are prone to pilling and soil quickly. Generally spun yarns are given very twist levels which in turn produce interesting fabric surface textures. Fabrics made of low twist yarns are soft, fluffy and absorbent and hence they are used for making blankets, towels, infant wear, etc. Fabrics comprised of high twist yarns like crepe, a good drip and pebble like surface texture. Filament yarns. Filament yarns are made by twisting fibers of indefinite length. They produce smooth and lustrous fabrics. As fiber strength is utilized effectively, they are stronger than spun yarns. They may be monofilament yarns or multifilament yarns. Monofilament yarns are made of single filament with no twist. Multifilament yarns are made of two or more filaments with slight twist. Plied yarns. When two or more single yarns are combined by twisting, they are called plied yarns. Plying of yarns increases the yarn quality like strength, uniformity, etc. Plied yarns are widely used in knitting, sewing threads and furnishing fabrics. Textured yarns. Yarns made of synthetic fibers are given moisture, heat or chemical treatment to impart new yarn properties especially bulk and stretch. Textured yarns have greater cover, breathability, insulation, softer and dried hand, but they are prone to soil and have poor abrasion resistance. These yarns are extensively used in blouses, stretch osiri, etc. Stretch yarns. Yarns that have the capability of stretching are called stretch yarns. It is generally made of the elastomeric fiber spandex. They stretch to an extent of 300 to 500 percent of their original length. They may be used either to increase comfort in the garment or used in garments while holding power is required. Major applications of stretch yarns include swimwear, active sportswear 
gym clothing, bandages, etc. High bulk yarns. They are made of specially processed acrylic fibers which has exceptional bulk, loft and softness without stretch. Fabrics made of high bulk yarns are soft and luxurious. They are used for making high bulk sweaters, knitting yarns, etc. Fancy yarns. They are yarns with interesting surface textures and are generally used for decorative purposes. These are yarns which are manufactured with certain irregularities like thick places, knots, curls, bumps, etc. Typical fancy yarns are tweed yarn, slub yarn, spiral yarn, baukul yarn, chenille yarn, metallic yarn, etc. Tweed yarns are spun yarns which have short colored fibers twisted into it creating heather like effect in the threads. Slub yarns have short untwisted portion at regular intervals having thick and thin places. They are found in drapery and upholstery fabrics. Spiral or corkscrew yarn has two or more plies which may differ in twist, size, type and color. Bauclay or loop yarn has loops producing, protruding from the yarn surface at regular intervals. Fabrics made of Bauclay yarn create a looped pile effect. Chenille yarn has soft producing fiber fringes on the yarn surface. They are used in furnishings and apparel giving an imitation fur effect. Metallic yarns. The use of metallic yarns in fabrics has been an age old practice. Gold and silver yarns have been used as metallic yarns in fabrics since ancient times. These yarns have been replaced by aluminium or aluminized plastic yarns in apparel and home furnishing fabrics. Presently, ultra fine nylon or polyester films are being used as metallic yarns and they are found to offer comfort with good luster. Blended yarns. Yarns made of two or more varieties of fibers are called blended yarns. Different varieties of fibers are combined to optimize various fiber properties. It may be done to get better combination of performance characteristics as in polyester cotton blend where comfort property of cotton is exploited along with durability of polyester. Blending may be done to improve uniformity of the yarns or for better structure, texture, hand or fabric appearance. To quote an example, if a little amount of rayon is mixed with cotton, it gives better luster and softness. It may also be done to minimize fiber cost. For example, acrylic is blended with wool to minimize the cost. Today, we are going to discuss some fancy yarns which are used in the manufacture of these garments. The usual yarn is straight and it is uniform. Suppose we create some unevenness in the yarn or protrusions in the yarn or something like slub in the yarn, then it becomes a fancy yarn. So first we will talk about the slub yarn. Slub is a defect in a yarn and it is due to the accumulation of all these fibers. Neps, extended neps are called slubs. It looks like this. Most of these fancy yarns are used in the weft direction so that their fancy effect is not spoiled by the tension. If it is used in the warp, there is a possibility of losing this effect due to the extra tension that is imposed in the yarn. Since weft yarns are subjected to lower tension as compared to warp, the blemishes that are present in the yarn such as slubs are present in the fabric as well. Now, there is a method to make slub yarn. There is a front roller of a ring frame which is delivering the yarn. Suppose the movement of the roller is prevented for a short time, then the material accumulates in the drafting zone and that is present as a slub. So there is an attachment which is made to the ring frame in order to produce the slub yarn and uh, what we get is the slub effect in the yarn. 
the other method of getting this club yarn is to introduce the yarn cut into various pieces they can even be a dyed yarn or a gray yarn and these cut threads are introduced in the carding process so the web that comes out of this carding machine contains these colored yarns and the process is allowed to continue further say draw frames and then simplex and ring frame so when the ring frame is reached it is noticed that the yarn contains these colored threads or the gray threads and uh, the jute yarn sometimes or flax yarns are blended with cotton yarns in a similar way and they are used in knitting to create some effects in that so this is how a slub yarn is produced and uh, the size of the slub yarn can be controlled by the speed of this uh, bottom roller and yarns are also printed in order to provide some effects to that and the jim yarn where the yarns are combined together and then they form into a sort of a spring like thing so that is the crimp yarn jimp yarn and the the type of the fancy yarn which is normally produced is it was there called triple twist yarn so one yarn is doubled with the other yarn and again another doubling is resorted to to produce a triple twisted effect so a filament yarn can be blended with a polyester so produce some special effects but the these yarns have become extinct today and they are not used because of so many problems like pilling and uh, other uh, defects which are likely to be caused by the use of these yarns and another yarn which is very interesting is the chenal yarn now we make a lino fabric and the fabric is cut into small stripes which are called chenal effect because they have got the fringes these yarns are again used that is the yarns produced from the fabric are used again for the production of fabrics in order to create some special effect so this is called the chenal yarns so they are characterized by the fringes here boucle b o u c l e this is a compound yarn comprising a twisted core with an effect yarn wrapped around it so as to produce wavy projections on its surface boucle yarns belong to a group of which the other members are jimp yarns and loop yarns the effect is achieved by different delivery of the effect component as compared with the core yarn the former wrapping around the later either tightly or loosely according to the amount of excess delivery and the doubling twist inserted generally speaking boucle yarns exhibit an irregular pattern of semi circular loops and sigmoid spirals jimp yarns display fairly regular semi circular projections and loop yarns are well formed circular loops so chenal yarns it is a yarn consisting of a cut pile which may be one or more of a variety of fibers helically disposed around axial threads which secure it chenal yarns are traditionally used in the manufacture of furnishing fabrics and as decorative threads in many types of broad and narrow fabrics a tufted weft yarn made by weaving in a loom known as a weft loom in which the warp threads are arranged in small groups of 2 to 6 ends which interlace in a gauze or cross weaving manner the groups being a definite distance apart to suit the length of pile the weft is inserted in the normal way each pick representing a potential tuft the woven piece is cut into warp face stripes strips which are then used as weft yarn in the production of chenal fabrics 
and a yarn made of one or more strands twisted around a usually finer central ground yarn and overfed to form a clear spiral wrapping. Then a loop yarn, a compound yarn comprising a twisted core with an effect yarn wrapped around it so as to produce wavy projections on its surface. Snarl yarn, a compound yarn that displays snarls or kinks projecting from the core. And fasciated yarns. Now, fasciated yarns are interesting types of yarn. So in jet spinning, these types of yarns are produced. So the parallel fibers are wrapped by the core fibers. And uh, this gives rise to the formation of this fasciated yarns. We have yarns which are produced in this fashion, they are called spiral yarns. So all these form an interesting groups of yarns called fancy yarns and the melange is a type of yarn which is used in weft knitting. Colored fibers are mixed with undyed fibers and then the yarns are produced. The dyeing may be carried out either with wet dyes or reactive dyes, but since wet dyes have very good fastness properties, the cotton fibers are dyed using these wet dyes and a certain percentage of these dyed fibers, maybe 4 percent, it can go up to 40 percent are blended with cotton, gray cotton fibers and yarns are made. They are called melange yarns. They have these dyed fibers mixed with the undyed fibers and they are generally used in knitting. The idea of using these yarns in knitting is to avoid the dyeing process after the fabrics have been knitted because dyeing of knitted fabrics poses a number of problems such as distortion due to the tension and if dyeing can be totally prevented for the knitted fabric, then it is very desirable. So bearing it in this point in mind, the melange yarns have been introduced, but it is also see notice that after the fabrics have been knitted with these melange yarns, they are again dyed to introduce some special effects. So this is something about this. Uh, fancy yarns and uh, we have discussed so many times the slub yarn, the bauclay yarn, the jimp yarns, the fasciated yarns, the yarns having the spiral nature and all. So discuss something about this textured yarns. Texturing is a process which is meant for making a filament yarn something like a traditional spun yarn. The traditional spun yarns are soft and they are capable of absorbing moisture and when they are used for the production of fabrics, they provide very good handle also. A filament yarn which is straight and when it is used for making a fabric, the fabric is clammy. That is. It, it lacks in a good handle. So in order to provide good handle 
and absorbency to the fabric. The filament yarns such as polyester, then nylon or textured. Now, basically there are two types of textured yarns, one is called the crimped yarn, the other is a bulk yarn. Then in between that you have got another category called modified bulk yarns. In crimped yarns, the input is the flat filament yarn. A flat yarn is one which does not have any crimp or bulk and this is the texturing process. So, when a flat yarn is taken up for texturing by false twist texturing method or draw twist texturing method, the yarn that comes out of the machine has got the crimp or waviness. Cotton fibers have some crimp which are responsible for getting a yarn having good elongation because if the fibers have good crimp then the yarn that is produced out of them will have very good elongation characteristics and the elongation of yarn is the most desirable one in processes such as knitting or weaving where the yarns are subjected to very high tension. And if the yarn possesses good elongation characteristic it will yield and the breakage will not occur. So, the elongation of the yarns has got very good significance in the processing of these various yarns in the machines. Now, the process of texturing has got a history by itself. We had what is called a false twist texturing process. Some years ago, The flat yarns were crimped by three processes separately. One is twisting, then heat setting, then detwisting. A yarn is taken, it is twisted, and then heat set. What is heat setting? subjecting the twisted yarn to heat for a fraction of a second. The temperature may be around 170 degree centigrade for polyester and after it has been set at that temperature for a certain duration of time which is seconds, it is detwisted. So, when this process is given to the yarn, then the resulting yarns have this crimp. In fact, texturing also can be accomplished by solvent texturing. The yarn can be taken, given twist and then immersed in a solvent, for example, acetone or uh, dimethyl formamide. There are so many solvents which are available and uh, each solvent has got a melting point and uh, the effect of the solvent on the polyester material is to cause a lot of changes in crystallinity structure and uh, in density and uh, even uh, their dryability will be different after they have been treated with the solvents. But solvent texturing has not been practiced industrially and it only remains as uh, a research. Uh, process, but on a large scale the yarns are textured using the draw texturing. What is draw texturing? Earlier there were three operations, twisting, twisting heat setting and detwisting. They were all combined together and that was called false twist texturing. So, when false twist texturing was started, by combining all these three stages, the yarn that was used was UDY that is undrawn yarn. But sometime in the year 1975, the technology of the production of these feeder yarns completely changed overnight. So, the industry is now using POY that is partially oriented yarn. 
The advantage of partially oriented yarn is that it is produced at a spinning speed of 4500 meters per minute as against a speed of 1500 which was used earlier and uh, it is having a good shelf life that means it can be stored for a longer time compared to what it was in the case of the undrawn yarn. And these PO yarns are fed to the draw texturing. There are two types of draw texturing. One is that is simultaneous draw texturing and sequential draw texturing. In simultaneous all the operations like twisting, then heat setting and detwisting are all combined together. Whereas in sequential, again it is done separately. But it is the simultaneous draw texturing process which has become more important and which is in existence today. So the PO yarns are fed to this draw texturing machine and we get a textured yarn. Now, how do we know that the yarn has been texturized as compared to the untexturized yarn or the PO by yarn? There are some tests which are performed to confirm that it has acquired this crimp. Crimp rigidity measurement is being done and the tenacity of the yarn is measured and the shrinkage of the yarn is also obtained. From these, it is possible to say that whether the yarn has been texturized or not and the crimp rigidity that means extending the yarn by applying a load and then finding out its length and taking the original length the crimp rigidity measurement can be accomplished and then we can use that one for the quality assurance. And in texturing process There is also called the, the starting and the final denier are entirely different. The cross section of the yarns also in after the draw texturing process changes completely compared to the feeder yarn. And, uh, Today draw texturing process is used by many industries and uh, many companies were making texturing machines also, Ernst Scrag, they are the very famous one, Scrag and uh, the draw textured yarns when they are used for the production of saris or for shirtings or dress materials clearly show the differences that have been obtained. For example, the fabric that has been produced using the draw textured yarn has got bulk and the handle is quite different. Now let us go to air jet texturing. The air jet texturing process uses air. Now, if you take a yarn and pre-twist it and pass through a nozzle where air is passed and there is an interaction between the air and this yarn and finally what comes out is the bulk yarn. That is a bulk yarn has got loops and a bulk yarn has got a greater diameter also compared to the feeder yarn and here no heat is used, it is only the water that is used. And in some cases, the air jet textured yarns were produced with water and without water also. But it was found that when water is used, the performance was found to be better as compared to the one which was produced without using this uh, water. And the air jet textured yarns are tested for bulk, that is diameter of the yarn. But there are other tests like instability test. What is instability test? Suppose the loops have been formed in the yarn after this air jet texturing process. It is very important that 
the stability of the loop is there. So, in order to check the stability, instability tests are performed and water absorption tests for uh, checking this bulkiness, then tenacity and elongation of course are measured and a lot of developments have taken place in air jet texturing since the technology was developed in the beginning. So many types of nozzles were developed. And the reason for developing so many types of nozzles was to reduce the air consumption, to improve the quality of these uh, air jet textured yarns to a very great extent. And today with all these developments, developments it has been found that the quality of the air jet textured yarn has improved and uh, the amount of air that is used also has reduced because we have to use a compressed air in air jet texturing process. And the air jet texturing process has got one major advantage over the draw texturing process. In draw texturing, it is necessary to use thermoplastic yarns for texturing. For example, polyester, nylon, polypropylene are called thermoplastic fibers. A thermoplastic fiber is one when heated above a certain temperature changes its structure very extensively. There is a great difference in the structure and it cannot be brought back after cooling. And a thermo uh, plastic fiber such as polyester, it is heated at a temperature of 170 degrees in the presence of the twist and then cooled and then detwisted. The detwisting takes place in the draw texturing machine by some of these uh, false twisting devices or by uh, the other type of twisters, uh, rotating twisters are used. See here, the concept of the yarn is that suppose we have a filament yarn and there is a twister here. By rotating it in the middle, one half of it gets the Z twist, the other half of it gets the S twist. But when the yarn moves continuously, there is the removal of the twist. So, after heat setting, we have this either the friction type or the false twisters which are being used. The false twisters contain a pin twisting. One pin is there and it rotates at a very high speed. So, in air jet texturing, the bulk is created whereas, in draw textured yarn, the crimp is created. So, that is the difference between the two methods of bulking the yarn. The fabrics that we wear have so many differences in construction, in their weight, in their thickness and the performance of these fabrics undoubtedly depends on the construction parameters. Now, let us talk about say lightweight fabrics. Lightweight fabric is a shirting or a blouse material. And why do we say it is a lightweight fabric? It is based on GSM, which is grams per square centimeter. Suppose you have a fabric 1 meter length and 1 meter say width, 1 meter length and 1 meter width. So, 1 into 1 meter is 1 square meter and after cutting the fabric into this dimension, let us say we are weighing that in a balance. You get a weight of 90, that means 90 is the GSM. 
but we need not waste so much of material to get this GSM. It is enough that we have a fabric cut into 5 centimeter by 5 centimeter or a swatch as it is called fabric swatch. So, the area here is 25 square centimeters. This swatch is weighed in a balance let us say x grams. If it is multiplied by 400 you get gs swatch is 5 centimeter by 5 centimeter which means it has got an area of 25 square centimeters. So, let the weight be x grams then 25 multiplied by 400 into this x will give you the gsm. So, this is how the gsm of the fabric is determined or there is a cutter which cuts the fabric in the form of a circle and uh, this is weighed and then you get the gsm. This instrument is used in the knitting industries in order to get this gsm because for knitted fabrics gsm is a very important parameter which decides many of its properties like handle or comfort etcetera. And a fabric has got a thickness also let us say 0.34 of a millimeter is the thickness of the fabric. Now, lightweight fabric has got a GSM of say 40 to 90 let us say. Then medium weight fabrics may be 200 to 300 and heavy weight fabrics greater than 500 GSM. Some of the fabrics such as canvas, denim are called as heavy weight fabrics because their GSMs are very high and you will be interested to know that silk fabric generally has a GSM of 45 to 50. The weight of the fabric the GSM depends on the density of the fiber. If the density of the fiber is less then the weight also is less. For example, polypropylene is a fiber which has got a very low density. Cotton has got a higher density compared to other synthetic fibers 1.5 gram per cc polypropylene is 0 0.9 and 3 fibers have the same density 1.3 wool, nylon and silk. So, the weight of the fabric depends on the density of the fiber from which it has been produced and uh, generally speaking a lightweight fabric is used in summer applications and it is also called a breathable fabric because it allows air to pass through. Whereas, if heavier fabrics such as denim or canvas are used, then the propagation of air is a problem. The air does not pass through that one and uh, that those fabrics are unsuitable to wear as an apparel fabric. But these fabrics are suitable for certain other end applications. Canvas is used for making certain shoes items like that and tarpaulins are there which are having a very high weight. This tarpaulin is used for covering these various materials which are transported in a lorry by covering all those things. And, um, the medium weight denims are also being preferred as jeans. So, the fabrics are generally classified on the basis of their GSM. Such are the fabrics as have as having a lower GSM are called as light weight fabrics. Very high GSM that is called heavy fabrics and if they lie intermediate between these two they are called medium weight fabrics lightweight medium weight and heavy weight. Uh. 
Well, the structures of the fabric I have already mentioned that plain weave or the twill weave or the satin weave and so many other weaves are also there. But majority of the fabrics make use of this plain weave because of various reasons. One is the loom by which a plain fabric can be produced is quite simple. It is not a complicated one whereas Dobby loom, Jacquard looms and all they are all quite complicated ones. They require a lot of maintenance and they contain many parts as opposed to the plain weave which we use. So, those considerations are to be taken for the production of the fabrics and the percentage of fabrics which are produced using Dobby, Jacquard, they are all very, very small as compared to the percentage of fabrics that are produced using a plain weave. And the cost and weave are also interrelated. If it is plain weave, the cost is less. If weaves other than plain weave are used, then the cost goes up because of the low production in the loom and more care which has to be bestowed in producing such fabrics.